Hi, I'm Will from Tested. Norm from Tested. Norm CES 2012 is over. Thank goodness. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about that anymore again, except for this video right here. So at CES, we saw yeah. a bunch of new products and technologies, uh, and we wanted to share that experience with you by listing our top technologies that we saw on the show floor. So top of my list, Sharp's 8K TV. That thing is 82 inches big, it's enormous, and the resolution was phenomenal. We were looking at a video shot with the world's only 8K camera of all these crazy scenes, cherry blossoms falling, space shuttles taking off, Japanese dudes riding a log down the side of a mountain, and the detail was stunning to the point that you could see what was on the face of somebody's digital watch. In terms of pure pixel density, not as dense as what you'd find on like a really good 21 inch monitor, but the point is it's spread across 82 inches. It's almost like the IMAX experience oh, yeah. in your living room. You, you pan your head around, your eyes around, to get the entire scene. It, it, the, the closest analog I could give you is that it is like looking at a really high resolution DSLR photo that is video and not photo. Really amazing technology. Definitely not coming anytime soon, but something to look forward to regardless. The next amazing thing we saw on the show floor was waterproofing technology, specifically a company called Liquipel, which has a new nano coating technology to make all your devices waterproof. Nano coating, I don't know what that means. I Bas don't know, I don't understand it at all. They, they dump a, a, a vapor of some sort of magical material into your devices and it actually waterproofs all the surfaces, not just the outside or the screen or the buttons or mm -hmm. the, the headphone jack or whatever. So on the show floor, they're demoing it with smartphones mm -hmm. in basically water tanks submerged yeah and wa working. Well, they weren't submerged, water was flowing over them. So it was like, yeah. it was as if you put your phone under the faucet and things kept working regardless. And theoretically, this uh, coating will also work on other things such as paper. Yeah. They made tissue paper waterproof. Yeah, so I don't know if you actually got to feel the, the Kleenex, but they took like a Kleenex tissue, uh, had, had liquipelled it, and then we're sinking into water. Now, it seems like they were probably using deionized water, which makes the demo work a little bit better, I would assume. Uh, however, people were actually handling it with their bare hands, and as soon as you handle something with your bare hands, get a little finger oil on, then then the water is no longer deionized. Deionized, the salts will come off with your fingers. Nano coating, waterproofing technologies. I think it's gonna be big for this year, next year. Uh, next thing has to do with the video again. 4K scalers. Now we were really hard on scalers when we were moving from standard def 480p up to 720p and 1080i, mm -hmm. and later 1080p resolutions with the with the HD shift. They just didn't work very well. The processors were slow. There wasn't enough data in the video initially to actually you know scale things up big in a way that, right. that looks good. Uh, 4K scalers, completely different story. We saw with the Sony 4K projector a scaler that had they not said up front, this is 1080p, this is 4K. I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference mm -hmm. uh, between the, the two video samples that they showed. Of course, controlled circumstances, all that stuff applies, but it seems like the addition of more processing power and a dramatically larger number of pixels with 1080p source content on Blu-ray discs means that upscaling is much more of a real thing for the next generation of TVs than it was for the last yeah, generation Yeah, and it's TVs. much closer technology than 8K TVs because 4K TVs are real, and so this is kind of yeah. necessary technology to make 4K TVs viable you for home. You can buy them today in Japan and very soon in Europe, yes. later this year in the United States. Very impressive. On the smaller scale, something, a technology that maybe we've kind of seen before, but really hasn't been fully exploited yet, 360 degree panoramic lenses yeah. for cameras, whether it's your iPhone or GoPro. A couple companies do it right now. We've tested the Dot and another mm -hmm. company also does it. But it's really one of those, why didn't someone think of this before kind of ideas. Well, it's not just the lens, because the lens is a fairly simple idea. You know, if you've ever sold a house and the realtors come to your house and they put up the SLR on the floor with the weird tripod and the parabolic mm -hmm. mirror up on the top, that's been around for ages. The thing that's changed is that people have built video players that now allow you to actually navigate through that 360 yeah. panoramic video as it's playing. Easy so, embeds yeah. on Twitter, on Facebook, and really, because it's just a lens attachment for right now, your iPhone yeah. and future other cameras, flip cameras, GoPros and stuff, it really it makes the experience fun to use. Occasionally at CES, you get to touch the future. That's what I did when I got hands-on with Samsung's transparent smart window. It's basically a big LCD. Uh, it's not, not a product that you're gonna be able to buy anytime soon. Big LCD, clear, see-through, you put it in place of your window and you can touch it to bring up widgets, web browsers, all sorts of crazy, Twitter, all sorts of crazy stuff. It's kind of like Tony Stark's window in Iron Man. I could not be more excited about this as a potential future technology. Transparent LCDs. So everything yeah. you get from a normal LCD, you know, actual video, yeah. widgets, you can run Windows basically, but it's not backlit. Light just goes through it from the sun 
or it could be side lit. Mm -hmm. And this cool thing is you can even use it as blinds. Oh yeah, right? so you pull down the, the shade, the blinds close. It's, the funny thing about this is it's nothing new. LCDs have always been transparent. Mm -hmm. It's just there's usually a monitor back and then a backlight and a bunch of other stuff in between the transparent part and the outside world. Samsung said, hey, we don't have to put all that stuff on. This is yeah. going to be much better without it. Exactly. And I completely agree. I cannot wait for that to be a real product that I can put in my house. We'll probably see that in restaurants, casinos, the service industry. Point of first. sale point point places of sale. Is, what, is what people call that. So. Speaking of other screen technologies, something we saw really cool, not a touch screen, but an interactive display that's smart and recognizes objects. So remember the Microsoft Surface? Smart. Eh? Yeah, smart is a keyword. So like, like, like the Microsoft Surface, was well, supposedly you can recognize cell phones yeah. on the Surface. Uh, the Epon Arena is a smart display that recognizes other objects, aside oh. from smartphones, like using a RFID-like technology. We're excited about this because the potential for interactive board games, interactive games in the future yeah. is um, limitless. You're talking about basically D&D, &D, but with both a digital screen and also, also physical objects. So I'm really excited about it for the board gaming capabilities and potential, assuming they get some software on board. That's why it's a technology, not a product. It's because right now, Epon is, is really, really exciting, but they don't have any software partners. Without software partners, then it's just kind of a neat tech demo. Right, but the tech demo works really well. The yeah, oh yeah. response time from the object to the screen was almost immediate. And you could, it's one of those things, once you see it, you can visualize the potential. Yeah, it's, everybody who looked at that was excited after seeing it. Uh, speaking of things that everybody's excited about, I have an app TV, you have an app, app TV. Right now, the app engines that drive the smart, smart TVs, uh, well, they're, they're stuck in there forever. Yeah. I can't get this year's apps on my last year's TV. Uh, Samsung wants to change that, and, and other companies do too. So Samsung's introduced a slot. Uh, what we saw on the floor during the press conference was actually just a, a kind of artist rendition of what they're envisioning. But uh, this year, Samsung TVs and ones going forward will have an upgradable option to allow you to put a newer generation a system on a chip uh, and software bundle into the TV. Additionally, Roku has done something kind of cool too. Yeah, they use what's called MHL technology. It's right in HDMI, but within the HDMI port, you can also control the TV. Yeah. You can have a Wi-Fi chip, you can have SOC in basically what looks like a USB key with mm -hmm. HDMI, plug it into your TV, and that is your smart app engine. So while the Samsung thing is a little vaporous uh, and, and nebulous still, Roku's product is actually real, uses standards that are available today. And the neat thing about it is, even though it'll come with a remote control, you'll also be able to use your TV's remote control to control the Roku. So, uh, you know, you won't have to use something complex like a Harmony or, or uh, you know, a universal remote to make that work. We're excited about this because it means that in the future, Samsung can't get away with selling a new model of the TV. Yeah. It's just a better engine. That's a software update, basically. Now you can actually Buy, pay for good quality screens and panels and then add the engine separately. And I, we're still not super excited about apps, but this does make TV apps much more interesting, more palatable than they have been in the past. If you have a 1080p TV, do not go out and buy a new TV just to upgrade apps because they are still bad. At CES, we're always on the lookout for new control mechanisms for our devices. The gestures used to be a big thing, but this year, eye control seems to be on the horizon, seems to be a real technology. Yeah. So at the Toby booth, mm -hmm. uh, these guys have built a uh, near IR based eye tracking technology that not just tracks where your eyes are, but actually what you're looking at. So you you actually got to try this out. You can control the cursor with the power of your eyes. Yeah, and while that seemed like it might be a novel idea, the implementation that they demonstrated was really cool. For example, if you're reading a document on the on the screen, as your eyes move across the lines, the document will scroll up, so you don't have to use your scroll wheel to read the document. That seems like an, it, something that enhances what you already do. My finger is so tired from all yeah, that exactly. scroll wheeling. All that scroll, all that scroll wheeling. And then additionally, there's also cool CAD uh, applications for this. For example, if you want to zoom in on a 3D model, you can just look at where you want to zoom in, scroll wheel up, and that's where you, the model zooms in. You're saying we're closer to enhance, 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 enhance? Eye tracking enhance. Oh, it's so exciting. It's very expensive right now, very limited use, uh, but they are releasing uh, their model for Windows 8, so uh, I think it's gonna help uh, designers okay. and also uh, accessibility for, yeah. for people who might have a accessibility problem. One of the places they are selling it right now is into accessibility issues, so people who have spinal injuries and stuff like that and have limited mobility from mm -hmm. their hands and legs are using this to get more use out of their computer, which I think is really cool technology. And then the last thing that I saw that I, really blew me away, uh, we've, we've been a fans of augmented reality here for a long time, yeah. but having to hold up your cell phone or tablet or whatever, using it as kind of a window into whatever you're trying to look at is weird and nobody's ever gonna do that in the real world. 
We saw goggles, Norm. Yes, not weird at all. No. no holographic Perfectly goggles. Perfectly normal. <laughs> Uh, Loomis is the name of the company that has this new lenses yeah. that basically project holograms onto transparent lenses, and it's the same technology they use, uh, the military uses, in a fighter pilot helmet. F-16 monocles that they mm -hmm. use to shoot bad guys are uh, use the same technology. So basically what it is is an LCOS projector, a liquid crystal on silicon projector, on the side of the glasses that project along the glass surface, and then the lenses are just ever so slightly faceted to give it a projection area. Uh, the upshot is that you put the glasses on, and it's not that like you're blacking out everything around you like you do with today's kind of 3D glasses. It actually just projects whatever you want to see onto the scene around you. Uh, so if you're there, uh, watching a video of some people dancing, it yep. looks like there's people dancing in the street with you, just wherever you happen to be. It is crazy cool technology. Uh, you kind of have to put it on and see it to believe it. And it's still three, four, five years out from being productized. Right. Um, but I can't wait, and I will be first in line to buy a pair of 3D augmented reality glasses for my phone. So those are some of the most exciting things we saw at CES. Technologies that are real now might not be real products for the next couple of years, but definitely give you a little bit of a glimpse into the future. Till next time, I'm Will. I'm Norm. See you guys later. Bye.